a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Zoroastrianism Zoroastrianism, or Mazda Yasna, is one of the world's oldest religions that remains active. It is a monotheistic faith, centered in a dualistic cosmology of good and evil, and an eschatology predicting the ultimate destruction of evil. Ascribed to the teachings of the Iranian-speaking prophet Zoroaster, it exalts a deity of wisdom, Ahura Mazda, as its supreme being. Major features of Zoroastrianism, such as messianism, judgment after death, heaven and hell, and free will have influenced other religious systems, including Second Temple Judaism, Gnosticism, Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism. With possible roots dating back to the second millennium BCE, Zoroastrianism enters recorded history in the 5th century BCE, along with a Mithraic Median prototype and a Zervanist Sasanid successor. It served as the state religion of the pre-Islamic Iranian empires for more than a millennium. From around 600 BCE to 650 CE, Zoroastrianism was suppressed from the 7th century onwards following the Muslim conquest of Persia of 633-654. Recent estimates place the current number of Zoroastrians at around 190,000, with most living in India. And in Iran, their number is declining. In 2015, there were reports of up to 100,000 converts in Iraqi Kurdistan. Besides the Zoroastrian diaspora, the older Mithraic faith Yazdanism is still practiced amongst Kurds. The most important texts of the religion are those of the Avesta, which includes the writings of Zoroaster known as the Garthas, enigmatic poems that define the religion's precepts, and the Yasna, the scripture. The full name by which Zoroaster addressed the deity is Ahura the Lord Creator, and Mazda, supremely wise. The religious philosophy of Zoroaster divided the early Iranian gods of Proto-Indo-Iranian tradition, but focused on responsibility, and did not create a devil per se. Zoroaster proclaimed that there is only one God, the singularly creative and sustaining force of the universe, and that human beings are given a right of choice. Because of cause and effect, they are responsible for the consequences of their choices. The contesting force to Ahura Mazda was called Angra Mainyu, or Angry Spirit. Post-Zoroastrian scripture introduced the concept of Araman, the devil, which was effectively a personification of Angra Mainyu. Zoroastrianism's creator Ahura Mazda, through the spent Mainyu is an all-good, father, of Asha, in opposition to Druj and no evil originates from, him. He, and his works are evident to humanity through the six primary Amesha Spentas and the host of other Yazatas, through whom worship of Mazda is ultimately directed. Spenta Minu are joined unto, truth, oppose the spirit's opposite, Angra Minu and its forces born of Akam Manor. Zoroastrianism has no major theological divisions, though it is not uniform. Modern era influences having a significant impact on individual and local beliefs practices, values and vocabulary, sometimes merging with tradition and in other cases displacing it. In Zoroastrianism, the purpose in life is to be among those who renew the world to make the world progress towards perfection. Its basic maxims include Terminology The name Zoroaster is a Greek rendering of the name Zarathustra. He is known as Zartosht and Zadusht in Persian and Zaratosht in Gujarati. The Zoroastrian name of the religion is Mazda Yasna, which combines Mazda with the Avestan language word Yasna, meaning, worship, devotion. In English, an adherent of the faith is commonly called a Zoroastrian or a Zarathustrian. An older expression still used today is Bihdin, meaning, the best religion, but although Zoroaster was himself a vegetarian. In Zoroastrianism, water and fire are agents of ritual purity and the associated purification ceremonies are considered the basis of ritual life. In Zoroastrian cosmogony, water and fire are respectively the second and last primordial elements to have been created, and scripture considers fire to have its origin in the waters. Both water and fire are considered life-sustaining, and both water and fire are represented within the precinct of a fire temple. Zoroastrians usually pray in the presence of some form of fire and the culminating rite of the principal act of worship constitutes say, strengthening of the waters. Fire is considered a medium through which spiritual insight and wisdom is gained, 
and water is considered the source of that wisdom. A corpse is considered a host for decay, i.e. of druge. Consequently, scripture enjoins the safe disposal of the dead in a manner such that a corpse does not pollute the good creation. These injunctions are the doctrinal basis of the fast-fading traditional practice of ritual exposure, most commonly identified with the so-called Towers of Silence for which there is no standard technical term in either scripture or tradition. Ritual exposure is only practiced by Zoroastrian communities of the Indian subcontinent. In locations where it is not illegal and diclofenac poisoning has not led to the virtual extinction of scavenger birds, other Zoroastrian communities either cremate their dead, or bury them in graves that are cased with lime mortar. While the Parsis in India have traditionally been opposed to proselytizing, and even considered it a crime for which the culprit may face expulsion, Iranian Zoroastrians have never been opposed to conversion, and the practice has been endorsed by the Council of Mobeds of Tehran. While the Iranian authorities do not permit proselytizing within Iran, Iranian Zoroastrians in exile have actively encouraged missionary activities, with the Zarathustrian Assembly in Los Angeles and the International Zoroastrian Center in Paris as two prominent centers. As in many other faiths, Zoroastrians are encouraged to marry others of the same faith, but this is not a requirement. Classical Antiquity The roots of Zoroastrianism are thought to have emerged from a common prehistoric Indo-Iranian religious system dating back to the early 2nd millennium BCE. The prophet Zoroaster himself, though traditionally dated to the 6th century BCE, is thought by many modern historians to have been a reformer of the polytheistic Iranian religion who lived in the 10th century BCE. Zoroastrianism as a religion was not firmly established until several centuries later. Zoroastrianism enters recorded history in the mid-5th century BCE. Herodotus The Histories includes a description of greater Iranian society with what may be recognizably Zoroastrian features, including exposure of the dead. The Histories is a primary source of information on the early period of the Achaemenid era, in particular with respect to the role of the Magi. According to Herodotus I.101, the Magi were the sixth tribe of the Medes, who appear to have been the priestly caste of the Mesopotamian-influenced branch of Zoroastrianism today known as Zervanism, and who wielded considerable influence at the courts of the Median emperors. Following the unification of the Median and Persian empires in 550 BCE, Cyrus the Great and, later, his son Cambyses too curtailed the powers of the Magi after they had attempted to sow dissent following their loss of influence. In 522 BCE, the Magi revolted and set up a rival claimant to the throne. Usurper, pretending to be Cyrus' younger son Smerdus, took power shortly thereafter. Owing to the despotic rule of Cambyses and his long absence in Egypt, the whole people, Persians, Medes and all the other nations, acknowledged the usurper, especially as he granted a remission of taxes for three years. Darius I and later Achaemenid emperors acknowledged their devotion to Ahura Mazda in inscriptions, as attested to several times in the Behistun inscription, and appear to have continued the model of coexistence with other religions. Whether Darius was a follower of Zoroaster has not been conclusively established. Since devotion to Ahura Mazda was not necessarily an indication of an adherence to Zoroaster's teaching, a number of the Zoroastrian texts that today are part of the greater compendium of the Avesta have been attributed to that period. This calendar attributed to the Achaemenid period is still in use today. Additionally, the divinities, or Yazatas, are present-day Zoroastrian angels. According to later Zoroastrian legend, many sacred texts were lost when Alexander the Great's troops invaded Persepolis and subsequently destroyed the royal library there. Diodorus Siculus Bibliotheca Historica, which was completed circa 60 BCE, appears to substantiate this Zoroastrian legend. According to one archaeological examination, the ruins of the palace of Xerxes bear traces of having been burned. Whether a vast collection of religious texts, written on parchment in gold ink, as suggested by the Denkard, actually existed remains a matter of speculation, but is unlikely. Given that many of the Denkard statements as fact have since been refuted by scholars, 
The tale of the library is widely accepted to be fictional. Alexander's conquests largely displaced Zoroastrianism with Hellenistic beliefs. Though the religion continued to be practiced many centuries following the demise of the Achaemenids in mainland Persia and the core regions of the former Achaemenid Empire, most notably Anatolia, Mesopotamia, and the Caucasus. In the Cappadocian Kingdom, whose territory was formerly an Achaemenid possession, Persian colonists, cut off from their co-religionists in Iran proper, continued to practice the faith, Zoroastrianism, of their forefathers and their Strabo, observing in the 1st century BC records that these, fire kindlers, possessed many, holy places of the Persian gods, as well as fire temples, Strabo furthermore relates, were, noteworthy enclosures, and in their midst there is an altar, on which there is a large quantity of ashes, and where the Magi keep the fire ever burning. It was not until the end of the Parthian period that Zoroastrianism would receive renewed interest. Late Antiquity As late as the Parthian period, a form of Zoroastrianism was without a doubt the dominant religion in the Armenian lands. The Sasanids aggressively promoted the Zervanite form of Zoroastrianism, often building fire temples in captured territories to promote the religion. During the period of their centuries-long suzerainty over the Caucasus, the Sasanids made attempts to promote Zoroastrianism there with considerable successes, and it was prominent in the pre-Christian Caucasus. Due to its ties to the Christian Roman Empire, Persia's arch-rival since Parthian times, the Sassanids were suspicious of Roman Christianity, and, after the reign of Constantine the Great, sometimes persecuted it. The Sassanid authority clashed with their Armenian subjects in the Battle of Evora, making them officially break with the Roman Church, but the Sassanids tolerated or even sometimes favored the Christianity of the Church of the East. The acceptance of Christianity in Georgia saw the Zoroastrian religion there slowly, but surely decline. But as late the 5th century it was still widely practiced as something like a second established religion. Decline in the Middle Ages Most of the Sassanid Empire was overthrown by the Arabs over the course of 16 years in the 7th century. Although the administration of the state was rapidly Islamicized and subsumed under the Umayyad Caliphate, in the beginning, there was little serious pressure exerted on newly subjected people to adopt Islam. Because of their sheer numbers, the conquered Zoroastrians had to be treated as demi, which made them eligible for protection. Islamic jurists took the stance that only Muslims could be perfectly moral, but unbelievers might as well be left to their iniquities so long as these did not vex their overlords. In the main, once the conquest was over and local terms were agreed on, the Arab governors protected the local populations in exchange for tribute. The Arabs adopted the Sassanid tax system. Both the land tax levied on landowners and the poll tax levied on individuals, called jizya, a tax levied on non-Muslims. In time, this poll tax came to be used as a means to humble the non-Muslims, and a number of laws and restrictions evolved to emphasize their inferior status. Under the early Orthodox Caliphs, as long as the non-Muslims paid their taxes and adhered to the Demi laws, administrators were enjoined to leave non-Muslims, in their religion and their land. Under Abbasid rule, Muslim Iranians increasingly found ways to taunt Zoroastrians, and distressing them became a popular sport. For example, in the 9th century, a deeply venerated cypress tree in Khorasan was felled for the construction of a palace in Baghdad, 2,000 miles away. In the 10th century, on the day that a Tower of Silence had been completed at much trouble and expense, a Muslim official contrived to get up onto it, and to call the Adan from its walls. This was made a pretext to annex the building. Another popular means to distress Zoroastrians was to maltreat dogs, as these animals are sacred in Zoroastrianism. Such baiting, which was to continue down the centuries, was indulged in by all. Not only by high officials, but by the general uneducated population as well. Ultimately, Muslim scholars like Hal Bayouni found little records left of the belief of, for instance, the Kawarizmians, because figures like Quayote Tabu and Muslim extinguished and ruined in every possible way all those who knew how to write and read the Kawarizmi writing who knew the history of the country and who studied their sciences. As a result, 
These things are involved in so much obscurity that it is impossible to obtain an accurate knowledge of the history of the country since the time of Islam. Conversion Though subject to a new leadership and harassment, the Zoroastrians were able to continue in their former ways. But there was a slow, but steady social and economic pressure to convert. The nobility and city dwellers were the first to convert, with Islam more slowly being accepted among the peasantry and landed gentry. Power and worldly advantage now lay with followers of Islam. And although the official policy was one of aloof contempt, there were individual Muslims eager to proselytize and ready to use all sorts of means to do so. Two decrees in particular encouraged the transition to a preponderantly Islamic society. The first edict, adapted from an Assassid and Sassanid one, was that only a Muslim could own Muslim slaves or indentured servants. Thus, a bonded individual owned by a Zoroastrian could automatically become a freeman by converting to Islam. The other edict was that if one male member of a Zoroastrian family converted to Islam, he instantly inherited all its property. In time, a tradition evolved by which Islam was made to appear as a partly Iranian religion. One example of this was a legend that Hussein, son of the fourth Caliph Ali, and grandson of Islam's prophet Muhammad, had married a captive Sasanid princess named Shahbanu. This, wholly fictitious figure, was said to have borne Hussein a son, the historical fourth Shia Imam, who claimed that the Caliphate rightly belonged to him and his descendants, and that the Umayyad Ayads had wrongfully wrested it from him. The alleged descent from the Sassanid house counterbalanced the Arab nationalism of the Umayyad Ayads, and the Iranian National Association with the Zoroastrian past was disarmed. Thus, according to scholar Mary Boyce, it was no longer the Zoroastrians alone who stood for patriotism and loyalty to the past. The damning indictment that becoming Muslim was un Iranian only remained an idiom in Zoroastrian texts. With Iranian support, the Abbasids overthrew the Umayyad Ayads in 750, and in the subsequent Caliphate government, that nominally lasted until 1258, Muslim Iranians received marked favor in the new government, both in Iran and at the capital in Baghdad. This mitigated the antagonism between Arabs and Iranians, but sharpened the distinction between Muslims and non-Muslims. The Abbasids zealously persecuted heretics. And although this was directed mainly at Muslim sectarians, it also created a harsher climate for non-Muslims. Although the Abbasids were deadly foes of Zoroastrianism, the brand of Islam they propagated throughout Iran became in turn ever more Zoroastrianized, making it easier for Iranians to embrace Islam. Survival Despite economic and social incentives to convert, Zoroastrianism remained strong in some regions, particularly in those furthest away from the Caliphate capital at Baghdad. In Baghara, resistance to Islam required the 9th century Arab commander Qayyot Tabor to convert his province four times. The first three times the citizens reverted to their old religion. Finally, the governor made their religion, difficult for them in every way, turned the local fire temple into a mosque, and encouraged the local population to attend Friday prayers by paying each attendee two dirhams. The cities where Arab governors resided were particularly vulnerable to such pressures, and in these cases the Zoroastrians were left with no choice but to either conform or migrate to regions that had a more amicable administration. The 9th century came to define the great number of Zoroastrian texts that were composed or rewritten during the 8th to 10th centuries. All of these works are in the Middle Persian dialect of that period, and written in the difficult Pahlavi script. If read aloud, these books would still have been intelligible to the laity. Many of these texts are responses to the tribulations of the time, and all of them include exhortations to stand fast in their religious beliefs. Some, such as the Denkard, are doctrinal defenses of the religion, while others are explanations of theological aspects or practical aspects of it. About 60 such works are known to have existed, of which some are known only from references to them in other works. In Khorasan in the northeastern Iran, a 10th-century Iranian nobleman brought together four Zoroastrian priests to transcribe a Sassanidira Middle Persian work titled Book of the Lord from Pahlavi script into Arabic script. This transcription 
which remained in Middle Persian prose, was completed in 957 and subsequently became the basis for Ferdowsi's Book of Kings. It became enormously popular among both Zoroastrians and Muslims, and also served to propagate the Sasanid justification for overthrowing the Arsacids. Among migrations were those to cities in the Great Salt Deserts, in particular to Yezd and Kerman, which remain centers of Iranian Zoroastrianism to this day. Yazd became the seat of the Iranian high priests during Mongol Khanate rule, when the best hope for survival, for a non-Muslim, was to be inconspicuous. Crucial to the present-day survival of Zoroastrianism was a migration from the northeastern Iranian town of Sanjan in southwestern Khorasan, to Gujarat, in western India. The descendants of that group are today known as the Parsis, as the Gujaratis, from long tradition, called anyone from Iran, who today represent the larger of the two groups of Zoroastrians. The struggle between Zoroastrianism and Islam declined in the 10th and 11th centuries. Local Iranian dynasties, all vigorously Muslim, had emerged as largely independent vassals of the caliphs. In the 16th century, in one of the early letters between Iranian Zoroastrians and their co-religionists in India, the priests of Yazd lamented that, no period, in human history, not even that of Alexander, had been more grievous or troublesome for the faithful than this millennium of the Demon of Wrath. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?